You're listening to Broncos for Breakfast with Nick Kendall and Scott Kennedy. Head on over to milehighhuddle.com for all things Broncos. Good morning, Broncos country. Can't get all five at once. I don't know what to do there. Different platforms, <laughs> different companies. It just gives you a good idea who's running faster response times, too. That's a that's a that's a technical test right there. <laughs> Well, there we go. Um, all five, and we are good to go. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thursday, everyone, and welcome welcome into an episode of Broncos for Breakfast. I am your host, Nicholas Kendall, uh, and joined today, once again, as almost always, with my good friend and co-host, Scott Kennedy. Scott, how are you doing on this fine day? I'm doing good. It, it doesn't feel like Thursday already. I had to, no. I had to like recheck, uh, you know, when you, you get in late on a Sunday night and kind of sleep through Monday. The week tends to go fast, so <laughs> it's Thursday, uh, Thursday already. We're we're knocking on the door of the weekend, so, uh, so yeah, lots of people coming in. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, we got Muhammad. Good morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. Says Muhammad, the five dollars super kicking us off right. Good on a Thursday morning. Thank you so much. I do not have my coffee yet because uh, I have some guests that flew in from Chicago yesterday. Picked them up at eleven o'clock, so I'm a little tired, but I'm doing well. So I, I'm gonna need that coffee, but. They're big coffee aficionados, so I'm going to save it for when they get here. Because you're in Seattle, right? You got to drink some coffee. Yeah, um, it's for got, sure. You're, you're going to have to drink double for me on that one. Um, and uh, Muhammad also saying good morning to Broncos country. EJ in the house saying good morning, Nick and Scott and Broncos country. Jeremy, the Kirk Cousins look like I always like to give him a hard time there. Good morning, fellas. Dave Glassman in the house. Dave, it's a little early for those beers, although I think in Germany they drink beer for breakfast because they drink those the, the lighter ones. So uh, yeah, it's maybe not, not early. It's mid-afternoon. You know, you can... It's, it, you can go and have your beer and then a little siesta. The problem with me drinking beer early in the day was it always led to beers like 17, 18 and 19. Yeah. So I never saw the end of the day. I just <laughs> saw it, it was not good. That's why, that's why we stick to coffee these days, man. I, uh, I don't want to get into how early I've had uh, some adult beverages in my college days, prepping for the Iowa Hawkeye games, 11 o'clock kickoffs too. Yeah. <laughs> you're usually rolling oh in at God. nine o'clock in the morning. You're like, oh, okay, right. let's go. Let's go. U.S. Dave, buenos dias. Good to see you, U.S. Dave. Um, that's not very U.S. Dave of you to say. No, I'm just kidding. We speak Americanese here. Uh, Clayton Heron coming in here. Morning, guys. Uh, EJ saying, I'm hungry. What's for breakfast, guys? We're going to talk a little bit of Melvin Gordon versus Javante Williams because we both have some, some takes there to get into. So that'll be fun. Um, and then Dave Glassman says, think of it more as me saying cheers. Well, Either way, prost to you. I guess I, I got to get that in because the Germans lost. Shout out to all our uh, you our English listeners as well. Good game. First time England's beaten Germany in tournament play. And uh, Germany had bad form all tournament. But England, man, I'm pulling for you guys. Germany's uh, be fun. Right, right now. I mean, we yeah. could, we could, I don't want to talk too much about this. We could we could do that later. Y'all can hit me up in on other formats. But, you know, Germany got bounced out of the World Cup early last, you know, fairly recently. It's just it's not a great cycle for them right now. Nope, I think it's time to move on from Joachim Lowe, uh, but is what it is. They look old. They just bad form, bad style. I'm one of my best friends is German, and uh, he hates him. I hear it constantly, daily, about how much Joachim Lowe is terrible. <laughs> so, uh, Omar, U.S. Dave saying 10 miles from Mexico here in Arizona. Okay, you'll yeah, get a pass there. Buddy. Yeah, you're not you're not hearing nearly as much English then uh, yeah. there as as, as Espanol. Uh, Ophir coming in. Good to see you again. It's been a bit. Uh, I think Melvin loses the job by week nine or ten, and uh, Clayton. Getting us under the matters of business here. Smash the like button, guys. And that means I should probably get going here. Guys, this is Broncos for Breakfast. Make sure you follow Scott and I on Twitter. Uh, myself, at Nick Kendall, and Scott, at Scout Kennedy. While you're over on Twitter, also follow us at Mile High Huddle and at Huddle Up Pod. Um, smash that like button. As Clayton said so kindly there. Thank you very much, Clayton, for uh, giving us a shout out there. Smack that, smash the like button. I only see three on Facebook right now. Now it's four. Good job. Good job, Scott. I see you coming in, Scott Squires. Um, but while you guys are over on Facebook, make sure you also go to facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod, as well as facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle. Uh, Facebook's probably our number two way to watch us. If you guys are watching us there, thank you very much. Also, shout out to Periscope and Twitch folks. Um, but number one is YouTube. Um, and if you are joining us on YouTube today, please subscribe, like, and share. It's the second best way you can... Be- uh, support the show outside of the monetary super chats, which we always do appreciate shout out to Muhammad so far for coming in with that one. I appreciate you buddy. Um, but, uh, 
yeah, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. And uh, let's get the wheels off the ground here. A couple more chats coming in here. Um, we got uh, uh, Alejandro. Alejandro. Duh. The Lady Gaga song, right? Good morning, Broncos country. Uh, good morning to you, Alejandro. Good to see you, buddy. Um, we got Jeremy saying Jack uh, Grealish is a difference maker for England. Yeah, he's a... Uh, Pretty good. They're, I'm pulling for them, although you I am know, pulling for Denmark. You too. guys, you guys have convinced me. We're gonna do. We're gonna do a uh, a 10 a.m. Is this time work for everybody? Because we could do 11, but the games start at noon. Uh, I want to do a 10 a.m. over on my channel. We'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll talk Euros if uh, if that works. And uh, EJ, this is Stamford Bridge. I took this picture uh, in November. In November, or December, November, or December. I think I went right after Thanksgiving. Like we left Friday after Thanksgiving, so it could be November or December. Um, yeah. that we, that, that I, that I took this picture. So it's Stamford bridge, London, England. Um, so let's do on my channel tomorrow, Nick, you interested or since you have people in town uh, or I can go solo with all the, the people, uh, we'll, we'll do, we'll do a, a, a football for breakfast on my channel tomorrow at 10. And that way we won't have to talk anymore. International football here. <laughs> that sounds good. It's, it's so fun. I always enjoyed it. I used to work at a, uh, a summer school where um, it was kind of for underprivileged kids. And uh, a lot of them were of uh, Latin descent. So we'd have FIFA tournaments and man, so much fun. That really actually got me into soccer. Um, so also guys on youtube.com while you're there, follow Scott youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Scott Kennedy. And I'm going to drop the, uh, the auto sub here also in the chat. If you guys just click that link, it'll take you there. And Scott always has good content. If you guys want to follow him, Go talk the Euros with them or football. I mean, a lot man of many interests in baseball too. I got my, sorry guys, my, they're not playing very well this year, but I got my retro Cardinals. Oh, that's, uh, a, that's you're not old enough to remember that team. That was a heck of a team though. That was, that was, old, ball. that was old school baseball with Vince Coleman, Terry Pendleton and Willie McGee. Uh, that was a good, that was a, that was a, that was a good Cardinals team. One of my uh, good yes, friends. 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, same time, same time tomorrow, Jeremy question. Um, We'll, we'll I'll put it out on, uh, on on Twitter. Just say, yeah, we'll, we'll preview some Euros. And even if there's the four of us that are in here talking, hey, I'll do it. So that'd be yeah. good for me. Yeah. No, uh, one of my good friends, but back to the Cardinals, he dated for a long time Whitey uh, Herzog's granddaughter. <laughs> so uh, we got some tickets a lot of times. So that was a lot of fun. Tommy's in the house. Greg Smith is in the house. Scott Squires is in the house. Thank you for the like, Scott. Timothy DePhillips is in the house. Timothy D. Phillips, but more fun to say DePhillips. What's up, guys? I like Javante as running back one. That'll be fun. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. We want to say hello to everybody. Matthew uh, Beattie's in the house uh, over on Facebook saying subscribe. Subscribe all around. Thank you very much, Matthew. Uh, Steven Barr's in the house. Good afternoon, Broncos for breakfast. Hit those like buttons. We have eight on the Facebook side. I know we can do better. Steven's the most recent one, so we appreciate you, Steven. Robert Caslow's in the house. Ah, oh, King of the Superstars coming in here. Uh, Gary Leeds Palmer, always dropping stars over on Facebook. He says, morning, Nick and Scott and Broncos country. Uh, thank you so much. That's uh, it's really helpful. Um, Tommy saying Landon Donovan got him into soccer. Um, <laughs> Robert Caslow saying his baseball real sport. Well, as much of a real sport as a frozen stick ball out there with those hockey guys, man, I don't want to say that too loud. A lot of those Seattle fans, man, they are hardcore about their uh, their Kraken coming in here. And so uh, I, Timothy. I, I've always had a – there needs to be some sort of cardiovascular – uh, at, at play, you, you have to be able to work up your, you know, your lungs for it to be a sport. Yeah. Um, so therefore golf is a game. It's an Bowling. incredibly skilled game, but I don't necessarily consider it a sport. Um, you know, baseball. Yeah. There's, there's still some running involved. So otherwise yeah. it would, it could be considered more like croquet, but no, there's, there's still some running involved. So I, I call, I call baseball a sport, you know, especially, um, when you watch some of those guys circle the bases at Mach three and, and run down plays and absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, if you're talking about athleticism, I mean, Peyton wasn't the greatest athlete, but he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time. So there's different ways. Uh, Jeremy Sean coming here, just to be clear, 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, I think that is uh, correct for Scott doing the Euros uh, discussion. 10 o'clock Eastern, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, my channel tomorrow, 10 o'clock. The same, same time. This, this, this time seems to work, so we'll do it on Friday on my channel, and we'll talk Euros leading up to, uh, to the uh, quarterfinals. There's two games tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now let's get to... Some football. Absolutely. Broncos, absolutely. Broncos football. Thank God. Because I'm uh, ABD enough that I'll, you start throwing out topics and we'll be talking Tommy Boy on here in a minute. So let's get back uh, on track. <laughs> All time favorite movie, Scott. Go. No. Okay. Um, 
So the Broncos, they have a lot of positions that are deep this year that are going to be a lot of fun position battles. And we talked about that last Tuesday as well, or this past Tuesday as well with the cornerback position. Um, We didn't get as much into the depth because the top four or five are so fun. But one of the positions that really, and we talked like patience for Patrick Sertan, what they're going to do with Bryce Callahan, patience for Michael Ojemudia, Kerry Vincent Jr., running back. That's a position you don't have time for patience. The best year of a running back a lot of times or their most valuable season is either their first or second year in the league while they still have a lot of tread on the tires. And uh, you can see running backs gain skills in the passing game and uh, pass protection. But really, their rookie season, there's not much of a learning curve. They're as good as they're going to be right out the gate. So the Broncos this past year traded up to the equivalent of a late first round pick in value to pick 35 overall. Yes, correct. And uh, selected running back from uh, University of North Carolina, Javonza Williams, um, part of a really good running back duo for the Tar Heels this last year with Michael Carter Jr. as well. Um, and that while the Broncos needed a running back long term, they still have a very highly paid, very talented running back in Melvin Gordon on this team. Uh, last year, the Broncos offense, the last six weeks of the year, seven weeks of the year, if you don't count the Saints game with Kendall Hilton playing quarterback. Melvin Gordon was that offensive MVP. I mean, he was running great. He was picking up chunks. He was protecting the football. Uh, he's a good pass protector. He's a decent receiver. But the Broncos go up and get a running back early in the second round. And one of my favorite running backs in this entire class as well. Um, so what what do we make of this? There's only one ball. Uh, the running backs, you know, you're not going to play two on the field, hopefully. Not in this economy. Mm-hmm. So um, how does this fall apart? How does this break, uh, break down? Because... Uh- I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't. Oh, I I think it's easy. Uh, honestly, I do. I, I don't think there's any there's even that much of a debate here. I think they're going to they're going to get fairly uh, split carries fairly evenly. Um, Seventeen games. Oh, well, I don't know if you guys maybe that did I lose you here? Yep, it froze for a second. You're good. You're back. Okay. Uh, I was going to say I, I think it's fairly fairly easy. Actually, I don't think it's it's too difficult. Um, in that, let me shut this one off here real quick. The 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 Broncos depth chart one is auto playing videos in the background, so we're going to close that one <laughs> since we're just talking here. Um, but we're 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 talking seventeen games. Uh, there's four hundred and fifty carries basically uh, that that go between running backs. Uh, Melvin Gordon, I think, if you look at his numbers the last few years, uh, you know, when in his heyday, he was two hundred fifty four carries in sixteen, two hundred eighty four in seventeen. Last year, he had two hundred fifteen. And he had the best average, the second best uh, yards per carry average of his career. So he's going on. He'll he'll turn twenty eight this year in this in this in this uh, in this season. He's wise enough now to understand the idea of lengthening his career. Uh, the the players are are smart enough to understand the idea of splitting carries and lengthening their careers. Javante Williams just came out of a system where he had almost the same identical carries as Michael Carter at UNC. They get it these days. We've talked so much wear and tear on running backs that they understand for me to be my best, I need a, I need a co-pilot here. I need a partner. So yeah. I don't necessarily think of them as who beats this guy out or who beats that guy out. What I want to, what for me, the conversation becomes, how can they be effective together? How do they differ? Where can they be used in different situations? And what makes them, how can they complement each other? Because for me, it's, it's 1A, 1B. Uh, you know, if we've got a starter, so to speak, you go with Gordon to start. To, he's the he's the first one out there. You know, he's he's the 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 season vet, former Pro Bowler. Um, but I expect them to be really, really close. I mean, at bet, at worst, forty fifty five percent to forty five percent on total carries by week seventeen. Yeah, that's a that's a good comment, and uh, you don't really have the bell cow. I think that's kind of like you know the true five tool three down linebacker of the state. You know, it's maybe a little bit of a dying breed and you're going to have to shift a little bit as the game changes. And that's very true for having two running backs. I do think it's interesting um, for the Broncos. And maybe this is more because of the style of offense that Pat Shermer runs with a lot of power, uh, power schemes, a lot of inside zone um, that the Broncos don't have a dichotomized skill set at running back. You know, they don't really have a thunder and lightning. It's more thunder and more thunder. Um, which is, you know, fine, especially with how much those running backs are going to be asked to make the first guy miss and be strong at the point of attack. Uh, not that wide zone where they have to beat guys to the edge, right? That's You're not going to see much of that in Denver this season. Um, so I'm really excited to see Williams and Gordon. Um, I do want to get into them. Uh, where you, you were definitely scouting when Melvin Gordon was at uh, Wisconsin, 
correct? The, the, uh, not, not, not as much. I, but I've been, I've been watching a little bit more in the pros. Um, okay. You know, so I didn't see him and, and I didn't, frankly, I didn't watch that much Wisconsin. You know, oh man. Nope. Nope. I, I was, I was, as I was watching a lot of sec in PAC 12 <laughs> where mm-hmm. I lived out West. So I wasn't watching Melvin Gordon as much beyond just the, the basic numbers, but yeah, you know, Wisconsin almost becomes a little bit like the the Denver Broncos. You know, it's like, oh, Wisconsin guy put up a big numbers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, cheers, cheers <laughs> and, for me. <laughs> and, and, and so what? Yes, it, it happens. Oh, they, you know, he ran ran a lot. So, um, but you know, watching those guys it, to me, one of the big differences is now is Melvin Gordon has learned how to set up his blocks. You know, he, he's one of, you normally say, okay, hit the hole, hit the hole, hit the hole. But he's one who can hesitate, shift, shift, and then find a hole. Where right now, Javante Williams is that, that I'm going to attack the line of scrimmage yeah. right now. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's something to be said for both of those guys. It takes an incredible amount of confidence in yourself to be patient, to be patient back there as a running back and then go through. But you were talking about, you know, the, the thunder and lightning. I've said for 20 years, if you take this comment out of context, I'm going to sound like a moron, but speed is overrated. Okay. So Melvin Gordon at a four, six, maybe, you know, at this age, where are his long runs coming from? They're coming after he breaks the first line of defense. And by the time the back seven linebackers are even secondary, by the time they're crashing down and have to turn to catch him, he's got 50, 60 yards. Yeah. That is so much more valuable than a guy who is a four, three, five, four, four guy, but can't break a tackle. Those guys don't break long runs. Uh, you know, if you can get them in space, then, then they can do some things. But they're not breaking many long runs out of the backfield. The defenses are too good. You've got to be able to break a tackle. Melvin Gordon is very, very good, very confident in being able to set up his blocks and find a hole and, and, and get his yards. And he's going to break some big long runs despite his lack of breakaway speed because he's going to break tackles. Yeah, the best name might ring a bell to Broncos country, but uh, talking about running backs with all the speed in the world, but uh, always just can't get by that first guy, get tripped up by the first sign of contact, Tatum Bell. Tatum Bell was a running back. I think the Broncos took him in the third round. This would have been in the mid-2000s. Um, and, man, that guy, when he would hit the open field, he was gone. He could cook. But he just had no physicality, no balance to his game. And because of that, there's a lot of two-yard gains, with one-yard gains. Um, so it, it was a... Uh, you want to have that balance. You want to have that power. And uh, talking about Melvin Gordon there, man, he uh, he does have a good game uh, there, a, com- a complete back. You know, he's he d- can hit home runs. He's not going to run away from guys. But like you said, because he can make a guy miss in the hole or a uh, with good vision as well, he's kind of a slasher, so to speak. And you made a great point. I really enjoy his style where it was, it was different than Philip Lindsay, who would just explode like and he didn't have to pr- press the line of scrimmage the same because he would run a lot, especially when the Broncos were running uh, with a fullback. Uh, he could just find a gap. And then if once he squirted through that hole, giddy up off to the races, he could be gone. Um, well, but that's not really the same for Gordon. And and I, I learned this, you know, in roughly two in 2000. So we're talking 21 years ago uh, where I really started paying attention to the nuances of the game. The uh, University of Georgia had a guy named Musa Smith. I think he ended up getting drafted by. Um, I think by the Ravens, I'm not positive, but he mm-hmm. was everything you could look at physically, uh, you know, six foot, 220 pounds running in the four fours. But if you hit his shoelaces, he was down. Yeah. So he never, he had like a, a career average of like four, you know, three and a half. Meanwhile, down hundred miles Southwest of there, Rudy Johnson's playing for Auburn who runs a four, eight downhill with the wind blowing. And his average touchdown run, and he had like 16 or 17 in 2000, his average touchdown run was like 27 yards because he was a he was a roly-poly. I mean, you just watch yeah. these guys. He's this big, round dude, and guys would just slide off him, slide off him, and then he'd run for touchdowns, you know, scramble in it at, you know, his 4-7 speed. And then he had a nice career with the Cincinnati Bengals. So there's, there's something to be said, and it's because you can't measure it. You know, you, mm-hmm. you can't measure heart. Yeah, you can't measure balance either. But the, the balance, you can see it. You know it's there. When you see these guys getting pushed out of bounds because guys just keep moving them over and over and over farther as they slide down them and the next guy keeps coming off, you know, and then he's standing there signing on the sidelines with a trail of four defenders behind him who, are, who, who couldn't tackle him and he flips the ball in. That's the guy with balance. Those are the guys that are always bouncing off him. And that's the most – that vision are the two most underrated and important factors of a running back. And Melvin Gordon has it in spades. Yeah, it's uh, the one who when you're really talking about leaving a trail of guys behind him um, as far as missed tackles and whatnot. 
uh, Alvin Kamara. That's who I think of watching him at Tennessee. Um, I was a proponent, a lot of Broncos country because of the name. Um, but, uh, they wanted to trade up from 20 to like the top five to take Christian McCaffrey. who's a great player. I didn't want to do that because he's a running back. Um, but I was like, Christian McCaffrey, he's great. This Alvin Kamara guy is being mocked in day two and he's going to be incredible. And, uh, luckily sometimes you hit and when you hit, you want to make sure you're your own, uh, biggest, uh, supporter there. But Alvin Kamara, mm-hmm. that's the name who comes to mind there. He's a, did you watch family guy ever? Is that, is that you know, I, Family Guy to me was like The Office. I uh, I I started watching it and then I binged it, and like a little bit of that goes a long way. Yeah. Like after three episodes of seeing how stupid Peter Griffin was, I couldn't take it anymore. Okay. So I didn't I didn't watch it anymore. It's like that's how I was with The Office. I'm like, uncomfortable comedy makes me uncomfortable. Okay. You know, so watching Michael make everybody in the room uncomfortable was cringy to me. I just I didn't I didn't like it. So so no, okay. I didn't watch much of The Family Guy. Well, but Alvin Kamara kind of reminds me of uh, the bit that is the greased up deaf guy because they just they can't they can't get him. They're just sliding off of him. So I, Dale can't get, get can't get rid of you either. No, just kidding. Please don't go away. Um, we love you. Five dollars super coming in over on YouTube. Ask Nick Nick last week, but he misunderstood. Uh Oh, well, uh, with 17 weeks, don't you think the roster should be plus two or three? Uh, I think the roster should be expanded. They did expand it last year because of the uh, what's going on in the world. I mean, I don't think they reduced it this season to my knowledge. Um, so I guess it is uh, expanded by two or three, but I'd like to see it expanded even more. I mean, I bet you the NFLP would like to see it expanded even more. Um, more guys get jobs. You can get some more developmental guys on the roster as well. And uh, also it means that you're not in the situation like the Broncos were with, uh, well, hopefully not. I guess maybe it's possible that uh, the whole quarterback room would be out, but I was going to say the Kendall Hinton situation. So um, I would definitely be for expanding the roster. It also means you can have more specialists on there and the way the game's going, it's very, specialized in skill set from wide receiver cornerbacks. You can get some more special teams aces on there. I think I would be all about that. Uh, I know that the NFL maybe wouldn't because it means they're paying more guys um, and they want to, you know, those owners want to hold on to that money as much as they can. Um, but I think it would be a better product. So they should definitely lean into that. Yeah. I, I would like to see the Roth roster expanded too. I mean, um, you know, you don't have to pay your players in college, so that's different, but you know, 80, 85 scholarships carry a hundred. You know, mm-hmm. and, and you can bring guys in and out of the, in and out a little bit, you know, with with the NFL. So in essence, it's a little easier. But, you know, if a guy gets hurt, I don't necessarily just want to see him waved, <laughs> you know, hold yeah. on to him a little bit, even if he's a fringe guy. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see the rosters a little bigger, too. I mean, when you start talking about having one back up here, or one back up there, this is a dangerous game. I mean, you can be you can be in a bad spot in a hurry in mm-hmm. football with those small rosters. I mean, you're talking a two deep at best. At every position is about it. You know, there's, there's 44 guys, not counting special teams. Well, an injury, you're in, you're in trouble. You're you're yeah. you're really close from being in a lot of trouble. So I'd, I'd like to see them expanded as well. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy coming in saying uh, your talk earlier about a guy with balance and vision, uh, maybe not the best measurable athlete. Um, Trill Davis is a perfect perfect example of what Scott was describing. And there's a 30 for 30 on Trill Davis where he talks about that at Georgia, and uh, you hear Mike Shanahan talk about it as well. And I think they even made like the cliche kind of corny uh, reference to uh, I'm rubber, your glue, <laughs> whatever I say, bounces, uh, bounces off and sticks on you. Um, I think that's that's how they describe Terrell Davis's running style, too, because he just well, wouldn't go down. And what what's interesting is, you know, you were talking about Kamara and, you know, I wasn't a huge. He's from Norcross. So you've got we talk, we talk about all this time, but you can look at a map and we'll put a pin. I'll put a pin on where I live in Johns Creek. Norcross is 15 minutes the other direction. We've been talking about guys to the west of me. He's actually to the east of me. He's from Norcross. I wasn't that high on him. They brought in – Alabama brought in four running backs that year. And I'm like, no, I'm not surprised that he was the one that transferred out. I, I thought he should have gone somewhere else. I didn't think he was as good as those guys. And I didn't think he had that great of a college career. He's been much better as a pro mm. than I think he was as a college. Who does that remind me of? Terrell Davis. Mm. You know, so sometimes that game – as crazy as it sounds, your game can translate better on the next level than even it can on the college level. You know, if I'm running an Oregon offense, I want that speedy scat back guy, you know, that, that, that I can get in space because there, there is more space available in, uh, in the college game, you know, watching highlights of Javonta Williams. I'm like, nobody's touching this guy, you know, you know, meanwhile, uh, Melvin Gordon is having to sift and find his way through all this because the defense are so much better. And one may translate better on the next level, but Terrell Davis and Alvin Kamara are two guys that I think were better pros than than amateurs. And that 
that's another way to tie those two together. Can you tell the coffee's kicking in? I started right at, at kickoff here, so I'm I'm good. I'm good to go now. <laughs> oh man, I'm typically half a half a mug in at this point. Um, Travis, good friend of mine. We're on a Facebook group together, and we go back quite a way. So good to see you, Travis. Good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Travis says, "Good morning, guys. Enjoy all the podcasts." Just taking a step back from yesterday, if the team does possibly get sold, which I do feel an owner is needed in place to give this team some stability, any ideas on who would be interested in buying the Broncos? Um, I think that that's one of those things that once the Broncos are officially listed as for sale, you're going to hear a lot of rumors and movement quickly. I don't think it's going to be something that's drawn out. I think there's a lot of interest for uh, a lot of wealthy people to get in that club, but kind of like when we saw with the Panthers, like they were sold like that. Um, so I think that'll be the case for the Broncos as well. As far as who it could be, I haven't heard any names. The one name that st- sticks out to me is Robert Smith, um, who is, I think, a he's the, the cure, wealthiest. You know, yeah, the, the cure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Robert James. F. Smith. Um, I think he's the richest African-American <laughs> in uh, the United States. Um, he's from Denver originally. Um, so uh, he's one. I think he's had some interest in the NFL before. I know he does have some tax evasion issues with the IRS in his past as well. But, uh, you know, you point to a billionaire and it's probably, <laughs> probably the case. Um, so yeah, I've got so much money. I don't know where it all is. What do you, what do I owe you? Just, just give me take a bill. It. <laughs> just take it. <laughs> just give me um, a bill. Peter coming in here also, but um, I, I haven't heard anybody, Travis, when we do hear some names, we'll definitely talk about it, but I haven't heard anything other than pure speculation at this point. Um, so uh, Peter coming in saying Scott and Nick with a smiley face. Good to see you, Peter. Um, Charlie, giving you a hard time about your office take, Scott. We hopefully we didn't lose some numbers here. Uh, no, no, that's okay. There. That's okay. I, um, I don't. It's one of those uh, unpopular opinions, you know. I that and I don't that one, and I, I don't like Bruce Springsteen. Those are the two that I go against the norm on those. So, boss? Uh, yeah, the boss. I'm like, eh, not for me. Um, <laughs> so it, it's funny. It's you know, watching some of the guys talk. You know, they, they talk about one of the next owners is 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 Jay-Z getting all his money together mm-hmm. for possibly jumping into uh, one of the big franchises that I don't know if that fits in Denver, but, um, but you know, that's, you're going to start seeing names because the seller will start floating names out to generate mm-hmm. interest as, you know, to start building more buzz as well. Yes. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. I think all of a sudden we're going to see it uh, a lot of movement. So uh, we got flipping Booch saying, good morning. Good morning to you flipping Booch. Uh, good to see you. Broncos world saying I never trusted Gordon. Oh, we'll get into that to a second. Um, and we got, Oh, Miller seven Oh sevens in the house as well. What up Broncos fan finally made it a morning show. Miller. Good to see you, man. Nick and Scott, you guys rock. Go Broncos. Well, Miller, you rock too. Speaking of rock and Andrew Morrow's in the house as well. Good morning, y'all. And welcome back, Scott. Your perspective and analysis have been great this off season. This is a uh, time to cross over from the red and black to the blue and orange. I went to I- Auburn. That'll be easy. These are my colors. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're, we're surrounded by the colors, but no, I, I've, I've joked before. When it comes to being a fan, I'm the biggest fan of me. So when, when we start talking about, when we start going through Denver Broncos and I start giving my opinions and stuff and predictions during game season, I want them to be right. So I don't care about red and black or blue and orange at that point. When, I'm, when I start talking about different things, I want to be right. So that's who I'm rooting for. You don't have to worry about my allegiances. <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, Benjamin saying he's got five on it. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Oh, they're talking about the boss. <laughs> you don't like the boss. What a curmudgeon. What a use of the word curmudgeon. That's one of my favorite words. Um, I can tell you in the chat, I agree with you guys. Uh, two people that I do not want the Bronco the, to purchase the Broncos is uh, Jeffrey Bezos. Um, Cause I mean, I don't want the team to be ha- playing on Mars. That's so far to go watch a game. You know, who would be similar to that? Who has been a really, really good owner. Mark who? Cuban. You know, mm-hmm. Mark Cuban would be the the closest I could think of to a Bezos comparison. And Mark Cuban's been a terrific owner with the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, it's true. So, you know, n- new money, um, you know, highly invested, uh, highly visible, you know, which you don't yeah. always want from your owner. But, uh, you know, but Mark Cuban's been a great owner. So if Bezos could be an owner like that, you'd take him in a heartbeat. Yeah, and uh, the other one is Elon Musk, um, another person kind of in that vein for you. I think the big thing with both of those guys is uh, you could see them if Denver decides to uh, want the owner to play, pay for the stadium. I could see those guys jettison the Broncos out of Denver like nothing because they just they wouldn't care, right? They have no ties to Denver itself. No, why? Why would I do that? We make a living getting other people to pay for our stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's <laughs> that's. Uh, that's that's a different conversation, but I agree with you on that one. We're we're, we're going to spend other people's money. Are you kidding me? 
Yeah, and also I don't need the Broncos to be changed to the uh, Denver Doge, the Doge coins, whatever the heck that uh, e-currency stuff going on there. That's over um, my head, man. I, 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 about as far as I can go is, is watching stocks. I don't understand e-currency, and I don't really even want to. It's kind of like cricket. I got nothing against cricket, um, but I don't have time to learn a new sport. So I haven't, even though it's incredibly popular. Uh, I haven't learned cricket, and I'm not going to learn e-currency either. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Curmudgeon Scott at it again. No, yeah, it's, I'll get off know. my lawn. Um, but uh, Ben and Jerry, ooh, the ice cream, that'd be a good one. I'd be about Ben and Jerry's doing it. That'd be fun. Um, but uh, let's get back to the running backs here. Um, oh, yeah, that. <laughs> You talked earlier about um, Melvin Gordon and Javonta Williams being, uh, I've talked about them both being similar body types, but they are slightly different running backs. And I'm curious if you have any takes on what, uh, what are some defining factors that differentiate these two running backs from each other? Uh, for me, it's, it's right as the, it's the point of attack. The, the biggest difference watching them for me is the point of attack where, yes, Melvin Gordon can hit the line of scrimmage. You know, first, you know, get, get the ball. And, and, and attack it, that's pretty much what Javante Williams does. He, he's not developed enough as a running back where he's got that patience. That, and he hasn't had to, to be fair. He's averaging seven and a half you know, yards per carry at, uh, at North Carolina. He hasn't had to develop the patience and the experience and the wiliness of a veteran running back in the NFL that Melvin Gordon has. So um, you know, Melvin can hit the, hit the hole and, and break a tackle, but he's also got the ability to stay back a little bit and let his blocks develop and let the, his teammates do some of the, a little bit more of the work for him. Um, he, I don't think he's got that extra gear that Javante Williams is going to have. And Javante Williams can develop that patience. So you're talking about two different styles, but one that Javante Williams could become. Javante Williams could become more like Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gor- Gordon's, not going to become more like Javante Williams, if that makes sense. Ah, oh, man, I'm really, I'm really excited for Javante Williams this year. Uh, such a fun player, um, so physical. Um, almost maybe sometimes you'd say too physical. Um, I, I guess sometimes like you know, buddy, like I know it's the linebacker you're taking on. You don't have to lower your shoulder every single time. <laughs> maybe like you know, live <laughs> for the next yourself. down. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Javante Williams, do you expect him to? You said it was going to be 55-45, but do you expect him by the end of the season to be the guy who gets that 55% compared to Melvin Gordon, or is it because of the veteran status, the money status for Melvin Gordon, that uh, he will hold on to that slightly primary back? I think by the time you're talking about a player who's in 13 or 14 games, he's not necessarily a veteran, but he's not a rookie anymore either. That's true, yeah. No, he's going to know the ropes. And by the time you're, you're making a playoff run, you know, baptized by fire, um, you're you're not a rookie anymore. You know, you're 16 yeah. games in. That's that's uh, almost your sophomore season by the time you're playing. You know, college. So, do I think he can? Uh, part of it will be how well does he learn to set up his blocks and, and use it. So, but the, the other way I can see this being used is is a closer almost. Mm. So, will he be the fourth down? I mean, the, the fourth quarter guy. So when we're talking about splitting them, uh, it, it might not just be you know carry for carry. It's going to be situational too. So if you have Melvin Gordon come in and you're you're using six guys to try and chase him down and get through all your blockers and get it, then by the fourth quarter that defense is on their heels a little bit. Then you bring in a hammer who's just absolutely attacking the line of scrimmage and those guys are on their heels a little bit. I can see him being a primary closer, a fourth down type of, mm-hmm. of I mean a, a fourth quarter type of back. To, to start finishing out games. So, um, and, and he'll get more big plays. He'll get more big plays that way. And you'll look at the stats and go, well, this guy's averaging, you know, two and a half yards more per carry. Again, context, context. Yeah. You know, he's not going in the first in the, in the first quarter. So, yes, I think they're going to split time. Yes, I think they'll split carries fairly evenly. But I can see a situation develop where Javante Williams ends up being the closer and the primary guy in the fourth in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and uh, we got Broncos 17-0 coming in here saying, damn, in late, I wanted to show off my merch. Mm -hmm. Uh, Broncos 17-0, that's okay. You are one of our favorites because you're always so generous. Um, So uh, we'll flash you even without the super there. Um, (laughs) That's that's great. Um, Peter Middleton coming in here also with a question. Um, If Williams gets injured, and I'm getting a little uh, reverb on my end from you. I don't know what's going on. Sorry, I forgot Um, to turn it down. Yep, that's me. I forgot to turn it down. It's okay. 
Uh, if Williams gets injured, who becomes the Broncos' number two running back? Considering our number three is a special teams ace, it's still going to be Mike Boone. The Mike Boone, because he can do special teams work, that's going to guarantee him a roster spot. But if there is an injury, I think Mike Boone is going to be the number two running back. And he's really talented as well. Um, he's one that has those uh, measurable factors that always don't sometimes don't matter as much for the running back, but he's a big athletic freak, um, which is why he's going to be good on special teams. Um, but uh, he would be the number two running back, even though he is, he'd still be a special teams ace too. And you're hoping that uh, it wouldn't be a serious injury. So he can go, go back to that number three, but uh, I would not completely sleep on Mike Boone. He's going to be a fine running back. Yeah. And there was a, there was a question in there about, uh, about Royce Freeman, you know, is he pretty much, on the way out, you think? Yeah, I or think, is, so. I he's think already so. on the way out, and I just I missed that part, and he's already gone. <laughs> no, no, he's he's on the way but out. Yeah, keep dumb, him. Dumb. He was cut yesterday. Sorry. No, it's okay. They, he will be he'll be on his way out. Um, I would assume uh, he doesn't bring the special teams ability which you need for that third running back. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I think they're keeping it. And you need bodies for training camp and preseason anyway to eat reps. To, you know, to see those fourth string, third string guys. Um, out there working so he's gonna be on the team still and maybe there's an injury and somebody would trade like a conditional seventh round pick or something for him so you're not just outright releasing him um there's because he's still young um race freeman man he he started off bad for me because the broncos were literally on the phone with fred warner to draft him and uh he went to pick then uh, oh i have a actually i'm getting a call from john lynch sorry john i gotta go hangs up the 49ers take him the pick before. Um, so that made me really upset because I love Fred Warner. And now Fred Warner is one of the top three linebackers in football. Um, Royce Freeman had some of the sickest running back high school tape I've ever seen. Uh, Cause he was that size as a junior in high school. What he happened? was 220 pounds. It, it, he, he was just, you know, an early developer. Yeah. You know, uh, he, he was, if you take Royce Freeman now and put him in high school, that was who you had. So it was, it was Again, a little a little sadistic to watch, but you'd laugh yeah. as these poor kids are trying to tackle this beast of a running back. Um, but you know, he didn't live up to it at, at, at Oregon either. You know, I don't yeah. think he had quite the quite the uh, the career that we were expecting in uh, in college as well. I think he going to Oregon really messed with them because Oregon runs such wide splits with their offensive line, and uh, he was developed and or kind of grew into this player who doesn't play to his skill set right like he is a big yeah and that's how man. that's how he was in high school he was a hammer yeah. you know he was yeah. a, he was a, he was a wrecking ball you know don't be a scat back be a be a wrecking ball yep and he's turned into this finesse player now to be fair he was um uh, he was looking pretty good early on in his rookie career until he suffered an ankle injury and has not been the same after that um but bummer of a pick um sometimes it doesn't work out uh that's just the reality I mean, it was just a third round pick right like that's a valuable pick but if you miss on a third round pick Broncos took Bradley Chubb and Cortland Sutton in that draft too. I'm okay with the, those results. Um, Broncos 17 and 0 coming in. Speaking of uh, coming in and being a very helpful um, super sticker, uh, I don't know what it is because we do not. I'm producing the show while co hosting, so uh, wearing many hats literally. Um, but uh, I'm going to imagine this one is a picture of Javonta Williams winning. You're there. Are you there, Scott? Yeah, Playing froze again. Time. So I don't, I don't know what's going on today. Streamyard's been having some issues. Um, okay, the, I was like, yeah, I think, month. I think I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm on, on gigabit and still attached and restart everything. So, uh, yep. you know, Streamyard's been having some issues. So, but been, you know, pretty solid. Can't complain. Can't complain too much about the, the quality of, of everything we, we've done here. But Dale, appreciate you, uh, you coming in here on the, the, the second time. This is, this is Dale yeah. Hendricks times two. So, Dale Hendricks XX double X there. So we appreciate it. Yeah, and he says that fifty percent on YouTube hit the like. Uh, thank you very much, Dale. That that's awesome, um, man. Very helpful. Uh, before we and guys, we're gonna get on out of here pretty soon. If you if you have any supers or questions, get them in because I have a guest here that flew in from Chicago last night and, mm-hmm. and we got back at like midnight. And uh, I need coffee. I was gonna walk him to a local coffee shop before I got on off to work. So uh, gonna wrap it up here pretty soon. Um, but. Um, Javonta Williams running back here. We talked a lot of Melvin Gordon. I want to get back to Javonta Williams odds are oh, okay. The pathway. I want to put the uh, service up to you pathway where he is a bust. What happens? What goes wrong outside of injury where Javonta Williams does not translate to the NFL? Cause we're both big fans. I do not mm-hmm. see this happening, but I'm not, uh, I don't have a big enough ego to say, to talk in absolutes. There's, there's a pathway of, of reality where he doesn't work out. What is that? Yeah. What, what does that look like? What I, what I see, I see vision. OK, so I see I see where he, he picks the hole and, and he can get it. But that, that to me, that's the biggest question is 
You know, is he a guy that's just going to run into the back of his offensive lineman? You know, uh, no. But that's the if if it's going to go wrong, that's where it's going to be. Where he doesn't let the play develop, where he hasn't quite developed enough patience. Which that's what I was saying a few minutes ago. Where you get later in the game, where you're running smash mouth, um, just trying to blow guys over. Then, well, you can run right into the back of your offensive line and and, and move some guys. But if there's a if there's a question, the other part of that is. Um, he didn't catch the ball a ton in college, some, yeah. but they didn't, again, they didn't have to. You got hit, you got Michael Carter and Javante Williams splitting carries at seven and a half yards per carry for 2,500 yards, 2,300 yards. Why do I need to throw it to him? So, you know, how well can he be, how good can he be in the, in the passing game, you know, as a blocker, as a receiver, those type of things. But as, as purely as a running back, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm confident he has it, but you haven't seen the vision that you do out of out of Melvin Gordon, and that's going to be a big one. You know, making sure you're not just running into the back of your OL. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. So I, I, we fully expect him to be a very, very good running back right away for the Denver Broncos. Yeah, absolutely. And when you mentioned running into the back of the offensive line, having those tools, but just not the patience of the vision or the the processing speed. Um, my head goes to Trent Richardson, who. Uh, Man, third overall pick. Uh, don't draft a running back that high. What are you doing? Um, but uh, yeah, man, that's uh, that scares. That that's Speaking I agree of with crazy him. running backs. We, we, he was down in Pensacola, which isn't great. You know, you, you talk about Florida as being a uh, you know a hotbed for talent, but not all parts of Florida are created equally. So he was on the Panhandle. He had like a four hundred yard game that we were at. Just just crazy because he was another one of those guys who was plenty fast, stocky, and wide. Um, mm-hmm. just strong as an ox. So he was, he was a fun one to watch too, but yeah, he didn't strike me as a, a number three type of running back. The only one I think in the past 20 years that I'd say, yeah, get him that high would be Adrian Peterson. You know, I, mm. I thought he could have been possibly the number one overall pick that year. Not Saquon Barkley. No, that's not bad, but you know, Peterson's still on a different level. I mean, yeah. you know, there's he's he's the best running back to come out in in a, in a long time. And then for me, the next guy was uh, uh, playoff Lenny. What from LSU? Leonard Floyd. Leonard Fournette. Yeah, Leonard Fournette. Right. Those are the yes. two best running backs. Those are the two best running backs I scouted in 20 years. Hmm. I saw Saquon Barkley live uh, under the lights at Kinnick, so I'm very biased. Mm-hmm. Um, that dude was absolutely incredible. I've never I've never seen a player take over a game like he did. And I know I talk crap about running backs all the time, but Man, that was pretty special. We got U.S. Dave coming in here with a question. Um, I got one more uh, for you, Scott, before we get on out of here. So if you guys got your questions or anything, we might keep going still. Hmm. Make my friends wait. Um, why did C.J. Anderson get dropped so fast from the league when he proved himself with the Rams in the playoffs? I always wanted to know. Uh, I have a few things here. Number one, um, Sean McVay, an excellent schemer. You're getting great opportunities there. Um, so while CJ Anderson did have a good run with them, uh, a lot of that is, and you guys know, you've heard me say it, the running game is a production of the scheme and the blocking. And both of those were very good for the Rams. Also, Scott hinted at this earlier, um, somewhat, um, talking about Javonta Williams being a fourth down back. CJ Anderson came in with fresh legs. And, uh, sometimes you see that with running backs, especially in fantasy football, where you have a running back who hasn't been doing much. And then they come in week 14 and they go on an absolute tear because they don't have the wear and tear of the season. Those guys are fresh. They're ready to go, and everybody else is tired and dinged up. So uh, that's it for C.J. Anderson as well. Also, C.J. was a concern for him at college, sometimes at Denver as well, and just as his career progressed, um, he had a somewhat difficult time uh, keeping off the weight. Um, he kind of uh, put that on more and more uh, as his career went along, and I think that was the case for him at the end. I mean, you saw him in that Rams uniform. Um, he was uh, – talk about a little roly-poly. Um, but a great running back, great years with the Broncos, undrafted free agent. You gotta, gotta love that for the running back position. Um, so, uh, and also got older running backs, unfortunately don't want to dehumanize these guys, but, uh, they're kind of like a, a car, uh, a new car. Once you buy them, as soon as you roll it off the lot, the value drops by like 50%. So, uh, that's kind of how running backs are as well. Well, a guy like that, that, that played in Atlanta from West coast was Michael Turner was, you yes. know, fantastic. Uh, you know, legs like this, uh, was really, really good, but it, his drop off was quick was real quick and how about Todd Gurley you know another west coast guy we want to talk about that that drop off um and you know and improved himself in the playoffs um you know I'd say uh you know that's a small sample size you know again trying to do that across can, can you do it across the the whole season that's the concern when you're trying to sign a guy for uh for the whole season does All Scott right, Scott, like South the last Park? Question I like this one, Charlie Beagle. I do like South Park. I, I do like South Park in small doses. I haven't watched it in years. It's, it's like the Simpsons. 
The Simpsons came out was edgy when I was a junior in high school in 1990. <laughs> so after a couple of years, I haven't watched it in a long time. You know, the, the, the South Park's been out for what, 97, 98. So uh, I, don't, I don't need that much more South Park. But yeah, South Park's funny. Yeah, South uh, good Simpsons shout out. Also want to give a shout out to Conan O'Brien wrapping up his uh, talk show uh, host, his late night shows. Um, he was a writer for The Simpsons for a while. And I was always a big uh, Conan O'Brien fan. So sad to see that happen. Sad to see that end. One question before we get on out of here, guys. One more question for Scott. Um, Javonta Williams back at it because we we're really enjoying this rookie class and we both liked him a lot. Entering the draft when the Broncos got him, we were both pretty excited about that. Even though hashtag running backs don't matter. Tongue in cheek, guys. It's hyperbole. Um, the path for Javonta Williams to win rookie of the year this year. What does that look like and how likely is that? It's not going to happen. Uh, there's too many quarterbacks. All right. It, it's not. There's There's too many quarterbacks. So it, what has to happen is all these rookie quarterbacks have to bust completely, um, which is unlikely. Um, yeah. But there, it's just, you know, who's the MVP every year running a quarterback? It's a, it's a quarterback league, and there's a ton of rookie quarterbacks this year. So whichever one of the rookie quarterbacks has the best season, he is going to be the MVP. So um, uh, Maybe Peter Calpets. Middleton, 97. Maybe Did South Park went, didn't go back to 89? Not when they started anyway. So I, I, get, too, uh, I, get, too, I get too distracted. Um, but Javante Williams, you know, if he's talking eight or 900 yards, which is certainly possible, he's going to be, in, in, he's gonna be in the, in, on the podium somewhere. But I, I, I fully expect a rookie quarterback to be um, rookie of the year this year. Okay. Well, uh, p- that obviously leads to questions. Which one? Who am I putting my money on, Scott? And maybe I don't know if you're a gambler. Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence? Yeah, Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. I, I think they're the ones that have the clearest pathway to starting. Trevor Lawrence is going to be a starter. Uh, Justin Fields probably will be. Uh, you look in San Francisco and all the money that they gave up, all, all the, the the picks that they gave up for uh, – I'm already forgetting names. Trey Lance. Yeah, boy, for Trey, Trey Lance. Lance. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm already moved on. Um, that uh, I don't know that he's going to be a sure, a sure starter – um, then we go over to New England, Mac Jones. I don't know. He's going to be a starter. So uh, it's got, it's got to come down to Justin Fields or, uh, Trevor Lawrence. Justin Fields probably has a better team around him than, than mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence. So let's go Justin Fields, Justin Fields, rookie of the year. No Zach Wilson hype. Oh yeah. I forgot about him. The jets are easy to forget about. Um, they're such a disaster of a franchise possible. Yeah. So, so, uh, handy, it's going to be one of those three. Because they've got the, they're the, they're almost the guaranteed starters. So, um, yeah. you know, I would, uh, I, I'd, I'd go that direction. Okay, well, guys, that's gonna have to do it for us today. I gotta get running. Also, it's the, the off season here. So, uh, unless the supers are pouring in, uh, we might be doing like forty five minute shows here for a bit. But we're coming at you two times a week. Um, so, still having a lot of fun. Um, I will be back with you guys. We'll be both be back with you guys next <laughs> Tuesday. However, the um, a week from now. I will be off gallivanting around the uh, Olympic Peninsula. So I don't know what, uh, if there will be a show. Um, Scott, I think we'll have, to, we'll have to talk about that a bit, but uh, I will be definitely without service. Um, so uh, is what it is. I've taken a vacation. I've taken one vacation day since moving out here. So uh, it's time. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining us today. Before we even get any further, I want to give a shout out to everybody who came in and uh, donated and was uh, contributors to our show which helps keep the lights on and help, helps uh, make Chad think that having a morning show is a good idea because he wasn't sure about that at first. I actually came like, Chad, there are 24 hours in a day. We can have more shows. There's, yeah. It's not a uh, singular pie, right? There's more to have. Um, so you guys are really helping us prove that point. Um, shout out to Mohamed Badri coming in right away. King of the Super Stickers, Dale Hendricks came in twice today. Thank you so much. Um, Travis Weber came in. Also, to Travis, thank you so much. Broncos 17 and 0 with a very generous $20 super. And uh, Gary Palmer with the stars, as always. So, so helpful. Uh, so th- thankful for that as well. Um, and, man, guys, Broncos for breakfast coming at you again next uh, next Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Uh, at some point, we'll probably switch over to 6 or 7 o'clock my time. I'm going to confuse you. 8 o'clock mountain time. I'm haven't had coffee yet. I need my coffee. Um, eight o'clock mountain time. Some point we'll probably switch over to seven 30 mountain time, but today is not that day. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Scott at scout Kennedy and myself at Nick Kendall MHH. Also follow us at mile high huddle and at huddle up pod over on Facebook. Make sure you click the thumbs up the heart react. We have 17 over on Facebook right now. Uh, shout out to 
Homero, who gave us the one heart. Um, let's get some more hearts in there. You guys love us. Come on. What's going on? Um, but uh, while you're over on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod and facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle become a supporter um if you're joining us on youtube today please subscribe like and share um and uh look we have one coming in from peterton here oh yeah. man here 350 little, little, little tip on the way out tip your waitress try the veal <laughs> thank you so much um and some people saying keep the time slot well guys um we need the uh if you're showing us the love um it is a it's kind of like a network tv right where it's like well uh, what are the what are the ratings? Are you getting the love? And uh, when we feel the love and you, we can see the love, then uh, that gives us a much better chance to keep the show going, keep the show alive. So thank you, Peter, for coming in last second there. Um, appreciate everyone for joining us today. Also, if you're over on YouTube, uh, make sure you join us on Scott's page as well. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash Scott Kennedy. I'm going to drop the, uh, the auto sub in here as well. Just click that link right there. It'll take you to Scott's page and, uh, you, some of you guys itching for some soccer talk. Scott's going to do that uh, tomorrow. Yeah, um, we'll do it tomorrow. Same time, 10 a.m. Eastern, 8 Mountain, 7 Pacific. We'll uh, we'll start talking some Euros, uh, and we can throw in some paper talk there as well. You know, Jaden Sancho to Manchester United, huge. Um, anybody that wants to slam William, I can talk him for days. So <laughs> that that's just always a favorite subject of mine. And then uh, we can talk favorites and and all these all these type of things. So. Um, I'd be happy to talk soccer right up until uh, right up until kickoff at noon Eastern. So let's let's subscribe to my page, get the alert, and we'll do it tomorrow. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for everybody for joining us for another episode of Broncos for Breakfast. Stay safe and go Broncos.